Welcome to Actual Context, where we expose the anti-SJW grifters for the irrational, lying bigots that they are. No man are they mad at me about it. If you're subscribed to the channel, there's a 60% chance it's because of the Watchmen video. I appreciate you subscribing and giving me a chance, uh, and I hope you'll check out some of my other content like bread time stories or some of the other short form essays about objectivity in film criticism or fake news. Those should help you get an idea of where I'm coming from and what's important to me on this channel. Class and social consciousness, nuanced and honest exploration of media, culture, and history, and all of the areas those intersect with politics. Stick around, 2020's gonna be wild. But since that Watchmen video, which also covered the anti-SJW mentality, I've gotten a pretty hefty amount of feedback, which I consider a compliment whether it's negative or positive feedback. If you hated it, but you took the time to watch and comment, you must have enjoyed my presence or my voice or my editing enough to stick around. So thanks. I mean, nobody would skip the content of the video just to comment some hateful shit, would they? Nah, that's not what a sane person would do. Before we get to the Marvel bit, I want to make a few corrections, which were pointed out to me by some of you fine people. First, I made the erroneous claim that the attack in the opening of Watchmen Episode 1 was the first and only American on American air assault, which is not accurate. I appreciate those who pointed that out, because not only do I really hate being factually incorrect, what I learned is that there was another one of these incidents the same year at the Battle of Blair Mountain. This event was the largest labor uprising in United States history and the largest armed uprising since the American Civil War. Private planes were used to drop leftover World War I bombs on Union members. Pretty messed up. So I'll be working on a video about that pretty soon because this directly applies to workers' rights and it was a dramatic event that can teach us a thing or two about the history of working class people standing up to an antagonistic government. Also, in 1978, Philadelphia police dropped a bomb from a helicopter on the anarcho-primitivist black liberation group called MOVE. So I've got some notes about that, and it could be part of the same video on Blair Mountain, or maybe its own video, we'll see. I got a couple of comments about how me explaining that I'd been reading comics since I could read and that I think this helped me excel in things like spelling and writing and winning writing contests. A couple of people said things like I was projecting narcissism or that I was trying to establish my credibility or something. Yeah, dude, I was totally trying to impress you by bragging about my elementary and junior high spelling bees and writing contests. Come on. Look at the graphics that I used at the same time I was talking about this. That part of the video was to establish that comics are great for literacy and comprehension, not to flex about my goddamn spelling bee victories. Some people, believe it or not, still see comics as the literary equivalent to empty calories with no value whatsoever. That's what that part was about. Pay attention to the graphics that I use in my videos because I choose them pretty carefully and they work in tandem with the words that I'm saying to paint a picture. Don't take half the video's mechanics as the full story. The overwhelming majority of feedback that I got was positive or constructive criticism, which I really do appreciate. But of course I did get some folks disagreeing to different degrees and with varying levels of civility. One comment I got the other day was that I'm deleting all the negative comments, and that's just inaccurate for a couple of easily proven reasons. There are several comments where someone disagreed with my take on the show, or even how I interpreted the original graphic novel. Those comments are still there. There's a couple where someone tried to defend anti-SJWs and say forced diversity is a real problem. Those are still there, along with my conversation with them. One of them was a no bullshit fan, insisted that SJWs are a real issue and not the straw man that's been made out of the blue haired angry woman meme or whatever. After a few exchanges, that guy began to understand that I'm an actual, knowledgeable comics fan, and he was able to see my points. The only negative comments that I delete are those that are verbally abusive toward me or my audience, or use bigoted or toxic language. And most of those I didn't even manually delete. I just have my channel set to filter specific words. So yeah, not deleting any negative comment, 
just not interested in having a bunch of anti-fans who screech about SJWs without actually engaging in my content. That's not the kind of community I want to have here. And finally, I've learned overall that I need to focus my scripts more. As much as I may get my points across most of the time, I do need to keep improving the flow and cogency of my content. But my channel's two months old, and I'm pretty new to all this. Plus, I'm not getting paid, so I have to work a real job too. But if you stick around, I'm learning from every video how to improve and do better on the next one. If you'd like me to do this full time so I can really refine my work, you could donate to my Patreon or grab some merch from the store. Links below. I've got a few more refined points to make regarding the whole SJW boogeyman and how it's supposedly ruining my comics, specifically Marvel comics. Hang around to the end of the video so I can explain why none of this, your opinions, my opinions, and especially the opinions of anti-SJW reactionaries, they don't matter. Not at all. DC Comics is great. Marvel Comics is great. There's also a lot of terrific indie publishers as well. But the big two are Marvel and DC. I don't believe you have to choose one or the other. That's a false dichotomy like having to choose the Beatles or the Rolling Stones or Biggie or Tupac. Each have their specific value and their way of doing things in the same art medium with very different results often. It's a beautiful thing actually when you can appreciate each for their strengths without disparaging the other one. An example of how they differ is DC Comics has cities that don't really exist. Metropolis, Gotham, Central City, Star City, um, Bloodhaven? But this allows them to tell more fantastical stories, and their characters are often larger than life and iconic, essentially gods and titans, gracing humans and non-powered people with their heroism. I love that shit. It allows us to examine humanity and how we see ourselves, how we see the world, how we see our heroes in interesting ways. But Marvel was literally created to be the antithesis to that. Not saying one is better than the other, I'm just leading to a point here. Marvel was called the world outside your window by the original creators and was meant to have relatable people who happen to become superheroes. Stories that can exist within our world in real cities. Well, New York City mostly but with characters representing contemporary styles and cultures and attitudes. This also includes politics. If you don't believe me, go check out Scott at NerdSync's video on Captain America and the politics of comics for just a maddeningly fantastic video about the history of this. If Cap punching Hitler on his first issue's cover isn't political, I'll eat my helmet. Shout out to Scott, you beautiful, bald, brilliant bastard. There's a link to NerdSync's video below. If you Google Stan Lee's soapbox, you can find a lot of old scans from Silver Age Marvel Comics where Stan would address his foundational beliefs in tolerance and using contemporary socio-political themes. These concepts are in the very fabric of Marvel heroes and stories. So if you're against politics and social consciousness in Marvel Comics, you're against Stan the man. And in my opinion, that makes you a big old piece of shit. But objectively, it means you have no idea what you're talking about when you say Marvel shouldn't have politics or themes of race in them. Even as recently as the mid-2000s, before the fake SJW menace, Marvel stories like Civil War were thinly veiled allegories for the debate around the Patriot Act and the idea of trading our liberty for our safety. Pretty soon after that, the Dark Reign line explored the idea of unreasonable warmongers being in charge of our nation's national defense policy. Maybe it is more prominent these days and less vague in its approach, but at the same time our culture is more politically and socially aware than it has been since the 60s or 70s. And with social media and the internet, it's probably more aware than it ever has been. It would be against the very nature of Marvel to pretend otherwise. One thing I touched on in the Watchmen video but didn't really go into too deeply is the concept of a legacy character. Watchmen, of course, is a DC book, but I felt the need to provide some context around the industry in general and this sub-industry of anti-SJWs who have been making a living on pretending that comic books should be something else than what they are. But I didn't need to dive too deeply into the Marvel-specific complaints. A pretty common argument that I've seen, and I feel like it's designed to avoid accusations of bigotry, 
or maybe it's to prevent the person from realizing that their opinions are bigoted, is that characters like Riri Williams and Kamala Khan are bad because they just took an existing character and made a new minority version, which sounds plausible on the surface, but I can't imagine how many people have latched onto this without the proper context to see it for the bullshit that it is. Supergirl, Superboy, Wonder Girl, Kid Flash, Spider Woman. These are decades old legacy characters that were made to capitalize on the popularity of their forebears. Yet when Marvel creates Ironheart, Ms. Marvel, or Miles Morales Spider-Man, the chuds cry and say, why didn't you make a new character? Why do you have to ruin iconic heroes just to push a political agenda or force diversity? They'll say they don't want characters created only to push a political or social or racial agenda. That if the characters were actually good, it wouldn't be such a big deal. But there's a couple of problems with that. Where do they get their secret industry insider intel? How do they get their hands on the super classified Marvel executive file that says, create black girl Iron Man for political agenda? They're projecting their bias onto the characters. That's it. They don't want to read about a black girl with armor like Iron Man. They don't even want her to exist. So they project that she was created only to attack their fragile white dude identities. Also, their claim that if the character was actually good, blah, 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 that's their subjective interpretation. There are plenty of people who find a lot of value in these characters. They're just not made for those dudes. The original characters aren't replaced. Sometimes maybe they're taken out of the story for a few months maximum. And I'll admit I'm not a fan of how Ironheart was kind of shoved into the story out of nowhere while Tony Stark was in a coma. That could have been done better. But any self-respecting comics fan knows that these things are never permanent. Death is not permanent. Comas are definitely not permanent. They shake up the status quo, get the readers excited or riled up about whatever, and then they go back to normal. It's designed to build a new anticipation for an old character's return, or to retcon them, or to simply cleanse the palette from whatever crazy comics shenanigans they've recently been through. A few months later, Tony Stark was back. Ironheart was off in her own adventures in her own book. And now we've got a legacy character for Iron Man, the same way we do Superman, Wonder Woman, The Flash, Spider-Man, and so on. So what exactly is the difference here? between these characters and these characters. I just can't put my finger on it. Do I want new original characters? Hells yes I do. Do I mind when a new legacy character is introduced? Not at all. Even if I don't personally care for a character, they're usually shuffled off into their own title that I just don't buy or don't read. They'll show up in big line-wide events or as cameos in the original character's book. But how is that any different than Supergirl showing up in an event or showing up in a Superman book? I just don't see the difference. Let me know in the comments if you can spot what's different. As for getting woke equals going broke, prove it. Not with an anecdotal example like the recent Terminator movie which had beaten the franchise dead horse three too many times. Because like any other comic, show, or movie, some fail and some don't. There's really only a few titles that consistently sell and never get canceled for a brief time. You can probably guess which titles those are. I had a couple of comments saying that no bullshit in the quartering aren't white supremacists. And maybe that's true in the sense that they don't openly identify as such, but white supremacy is a social system and the false propaganda that they have pushed for years directly supports white supremacy as a social and class system. And in some cases, they've used explicitly racist talking points and dog whistles. I'll leave links to some videos below if you want to explore that disgusting shit for yourself. So that should be the end of that. No more anti-SJW hysteria. In a sane world, I mean. These guys aren't exactly rational, and this is their idea of sanity. To threaten the online harassment of people who call out their shit while calling themselves sane in the same breath. The irony would be hilarious if it weren't so damn pathetic. But these guys' opinions don't matter. Neither does yours. Mine doesn't either. It's all irrelevant when we consider the fire that rages in Australia 
across Australia. Gushin, Non-Compete, and Re-Education have all made some excellent videos on this topic and how the Australian fires are just an early symptom of the environmental chaos that's coming down the road. If we don't start changing the way that we function in society, if we don't get away from fossil fuels, none of our little opinions and our little feelings about our comic books and our movies and stuff like that, none of those little feelings and opinions are gonna matter. So check out those videos and be sure to like and subscribe to those channels. They all work really hard to make great content but before you click any links in the description, make sure you're subscribed to this channel and leave a like to boost the algorithms. But I'm not done with Marvel on this channel. And don't mistake my love of their stories and characters as being a subservient, blind consumer. I've got some beef with Marvel. Their relationship with Disney, their history of giving their artists the old infinity finger when it comes to royalties, in other words, the workers do not own the means of production and aren't given a fair share of their labor's value. But coming soon, the Punisher police problem. He's not the most healthy character they've created, and he may be linked to actual murders and police violence. So I'll be frank, we're going in guns blazing on that one. Until then, peace, love, context.